Psychology was born from a person-to-person -person interaction. In Fali Lupo Savai, I had just discovered from the National Cancer Institute that a plant sample I sent showed intense activity against HIV AIDS. All of a sudden, these loggers show up and start cutting the forest down. I went up there and asked the villagers who were weeping, why are these guys here? Why'd you let these loggers in? And they said, well, they're here because the government required us to build a school. We have no way to pay for it. So I was shocked. I said, what if I raised money? What could I do? So I came back to my wife, Barbara, with good news and bad news. Good news is we've saved a 30,000 acre rainforest. Bad news is we're going to have to sell our house, our car, and maybe one of the children to get enough money because I've got to get 85,000 bucks cash in six weeks. Psychology approaches island villagers and any island throughout the world and asks them what tangible thing they would like in return for setting aside a marine or forest reserve. And when I say tangible thing, I mean a school, a community center, solar heating system, a freshwater delivery system, something like that. And so it's just a fair and square deal. And the idea, like a lot of brilliant ideas, is so simple that it just dawned on all of us, really, at the same time, why don't we make this internationally? It works in Samoa, where Paul started it. Why wouldn't it work in Fiji, in Tonga, in, uh, in Madagascar? And in fact, it has. Psychology has really grabbed that idea, this idea of, of providing incentives directly to villagers, to, to, to the people who own this biodiversity, to conserve it. Um, and I, I think it's, it's a fantastic Hello. model, and it's something which the larger NGOs uh, increasingly will, will learn from. Well, ecology likes to work within the, within the parameters of, of each individual village's culture. These are the people who are, could be potentially the biggest threat but, the, but also the biggest hope for you know, any protected environment. So um, a lot of other uh, organizations or government programs usually go from the top down. It trickles down to the bottom, but then it kind of peters out. And a lot of the times, the, the local people have nothing to do you know, with the protected area. And as a result, there's no ownership. There's no feeling of responsibility or even any knowledge of you know, what they're supposed to be protecting. Working from the bottom up, the people really do have, you know, they're involved in, you know, choosing the area, delineating it. It's very simple. You, you, you cannot live without these trees, and you cannot live without the river. You cannot live without the reef, because they are part of you. Hutan dapat menjaga air, dapat kita tidak kekurangan air sekarang karena hutan di sini sangat aman dan kita tahu semua hutan dapat stop. I thank the psychology group for stepping in and trying to prevent our resources from being devastated. They come up with the idea of uh, allocating a particular place to be reserved, marine reserve, and uh, for the goodwill of that, they build a kindergarten. So thank you to the psychology group. This year I decided to go with Seacology because of the programs that they support in working with the indigenous people. And it makes, and actually going to villages and getting to know the people, culturally it's much more enriching than just going to a resort and just hanging out. This is, this is fulfilling. We're actually able to see up close and personal how our dollars have helped people. It's something you are actually feeling that you are a part of. As a younger generation, we really feel like Seacology has the potential and is doing a great service. We're able to snorkel in the 
marine preserve that's just been established a year ago and we're able to recognize that this reef seems like it really is indeed responding. We're seeing sharks and rays and amazing fish and lionfish and spectacular colors and coral reefs that are getting healthier. And I want future generations to be able to see those things. Mm -hmm. And Seacology mm -hmm. is helping to make that happen. And the villages that are partnering with Seacology are making that happen. And it's mm -hmm. really exciting. Islands are the ultimate biological hotspots. It's no accident that Charles Darwin discovered evolution by going to the Galapagos Islands. In some islands, 30% of the plant species are found nowhere else in the world. Right now, so many species are going extinct that future generations will be unable to tell the difference between our epoch and an asteroid hit in terms of mass extinction. So islands are sort of the front lines in fighting extinction. I'm very hopeful about the future of the Earth, the ecosystem, the environment, uh, because 30 years ago, it was just a fringe movement. Right now, it's so accepted. One of the reasons I have a lot of hope, uh, it's the children that are leading the way. The ch every, every country we find that the children really understand the value of what we're doing. And then you have organizations like Seacology that come up with a cost-efficient, alternative way of approaching this thing, uh, a business approach, if you will, and you say, okay, this stuff can really work and uh, can spread throughout the world. Right now we're doing 20 to 25 projects a year. Why not do 250 projects a year? And we could do that without a great increase in staff size, just by increasing our part-time field representatives. It's ecology's win-win. We're not there to change anything. We're just there to help. I mean, there's this connection, people to people, village to village, and that's what really the magic of psychology is. There's this sharing, and I just, I know it sounds silly, but I think that might be the secret to moving this world forward. I mean, we have shown that this model works in different geographies, different cultures, different religions, because it's based on goodwill, trust and person-to-person -person communication, and that's the power of psychology.